Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is a beautiful day here in Colorado. It is a beautiful night here in Colorado. And if you watched my episode last week, we tried to attempt to talk about tone curves and three minutes or less, and I failed. Whole idea was these three minute Thursdays, and I was gonna try to take a subject and explain them in less than three minutes. And if I can't do it on the first subject, I'm probably not gonna be able to do it on the preceding ones. And it really got me thinking. I think for me, I want to do justice to explaining things to you guys. I still want to keep them short, still want to keep them concise, but I don't want to limit myself based off of a clock that I put on the screen and explain things in a non-respectable manner and a poor way. So I think what I'm going to do is continue to make these videos, make them as short as possible, but also educate and present the information in the most respectable way that I can. So with that said, today we're going to talk about the new version of Lightroom, Lightroom Classic version 10. Um, but we're mostly going to focus on just the color grading. And I'm going to touch on a few of the other subjects and topics that it updated. So let's get started. So first, I'm just going to briefly mention the small updates that were in this version of Lightroom. Uh, so if you're just here for the editing, you can skip to the timestamp down below. First is they've added a few cameras to support in Lightroom. Don't know why this was included in this particular press release update, just because they do that all the time. Second thing is they've added tethering to some specific Canon cameras, live tethering, which is more of a studio thing. So if that's something you're into, fantastic. Uh, I did not see uh, Canon's new mirrorless line on there. It's mostly like the 5D Mark IV, 5D Mark III, that kind of stuff. I'll put it up on the screen just in case you want to know. Uh, the last thing that they've done that I do think will affect many of us is they've added more and more GPU accelerated support. This time around, it specifically is talking or enhancing uh, brushes and radial gradients and other gradients. So if you have a nice computer at home, it'll definitely, you'll feel the difference. And just to make sure you have it on, you just want to go to preferences, performance, and you can check to see if it was already on. For both my laptop and my desktop, it was already turned on, so I'm sure it's the same for you. So with that said, let's jump in to the actual editing. All right, so the first thing I wanna to briefly touch on is the new zoom features in Lightroom. I'm not necessarily editing tools, but I do think that they will make your day-to-day -day ease of editing a little bit better. The first one is the scrubby zoom, which is adopted straight from Photoshop, which makes total sense considering Lightroom's entire existence is adopted from Photoshop. So to use Scrubby Zoom, you have to make sure that you're in the develop module. It does not work in the library mod module because it is GPU accelerated. So if I just hold shift and now I scroll right to zoom in, scroll left on my mouse to zoom out, and that's how you zoom in and out now. Uh, you'll also notice that up here, the ratios are gone and a percentage is here. So if I want 50%, I can select it, or I can just hold shift and zoom in and out. The other thing to note is that when now when I zoom out with the click, it will zoom into that percentage every single time. And obviously that percentage is selected by using the scrubby zoom. This is beneficial because sometimes I want to zoom out an image of my image, see a small version of it, or I want to add like a giant radio filter like I've done in one of my previous videos. So that's super helpful. Uh, the other zoom feature they've added can be used in the library module along with the develop module, and that is the box zoom. To do that one, you just hold Command or uh, Control on a PC, and you guessed it, you just drag a box and it will zoom in to that point. And it functions in the same way. It has now selected a percentage, and you will zoom in and out of that percentage every single time you click. That's pretty much it for the zoom features. Not necessarily something that's going to make your images look better, but for somebody like me who zooms into their images and out of their images a lot, I think that this feature is a pretty big deal just makes zooming in and out easier, something I do constantly when I'm in Photoshop. So I think this is a great change. All right, so last but not least, and probably why you guys are here, is color grading. So Lightroom has removed the split toning module and added in a color grading module. Uh, it still functions the same. If you had any photos that had split toning before, those will all still function. And you'll notice that we just basically have more control. We can now control the midtones and add color to them. And in my opinion, it's a lot more intuitive. So they've adopted color grading from what you typically refer to color grading for, which is video. So if you've ever used Premiere, After Effects, Final Cut, DaVinci Resolve, any of those, 
those all have color grading modules in them. The only difference is that typically when you're referring to color grading in video or movies, it's the whole, it's everything. It's contrast, sharpness, a style, a look, anything like that. In this particular case, Lightroom is using the word color grading to kind of add a look or style to your image, just like split toning was. However, I have found a use for it that will actually just enhance your image. You just have to use it very slightly. So enough of me talking, let's actually take a look at it. So we're gonna scroll down here and it is past all of these, just where the split toning was. And like I said, if you've ever done any video work and done color grading and video work, you'll recognize these color wheels. The other thing that I really like about color wheels is that if along your journey, you ever get into color theory, especially if you're an artist uh, and a more advanced photographer, you get into color theory and using a color wheel, especially something in like Lightroom, which a lot of people start out with, it's really good to see it because once you start using it, it's really easy to use, but it'll ingrain in your brain. And if you ever get to that point in your journey of photography, you'll know what it is by the time you reach it. So anyways, I think it's really good that it's here and we're using it instead of just these two little sliders that the split toning was. So really quick, this particular one or menu item shows all three midtones, highlights, and shadows. Uh, personally, I will likely use the individual selectors, which is shadows, midtones, and highlights. And the last one is an overall select that I will likely never use, but I never say never, maybe I will. So really quick, I'm gonna use the shadows to explain how the color wheel works. It's really simple. All you need to know is that the further you get out on the color wheel, the more saturated the color becomes. And then obviously, wherever you are in the color wheel is that color. So if I wanted to go really blue, I could go way out here and remember it's only affecting the shadows. Um, a few quick shortcuts. If you hold shift, you can only select the saturation. So it's only changing the saturation values. If you hold command or control on a PC, you can only change the hue. So that will just change your color. And lastly, you can notice how fast this is moving around. If I wanted to slow that down, you will just hold the option button or alt on a PC. You'll slow down your selector to give you much, much more precision. Below that, you can see that there is a drop down arrow. You can also see a little eye icon that'll basically just obviously turn it off and on your edit that you made. So if I just go down here and select blue, we'll leave that on for now. You can do the eye, see what it looked like before, let go of the eye, see what it looked like after. Uh, you can also do that up here, that turning the color grading off and on, which is what I typically do. Now, to get down to this drop down, this should look familiar. This is just the hue and saturation slider that existed, and this is identical to how split toning was. To the left of that, there is a color picker, so you can go here, hold down your mouse, and find a color on your image, if that's what you want to use. We'll be using that later. I'm going to bring this back down. And then lastly, you'll notice a luminance slider. So if I use the luminance slider to go left, it will make the shadows darker with blue. If I make them go right, it will brighten the shadows. Now at the bottom here, you'll see a blending and balance slider. Previously on split toning, you could balance between, did you want more shadows being colored or did you want more highlights? Uh, and, but we've added in midtones now. And from what I can gather, I'm gonna make an example really quick. So we're gonna have some pretty extreme values here. I'm gonna make shadows blue, midtones green, and my highlights red. And from what I can tell, when I use the blending slider, it will blend between the midtones and the shadows and the midtones and the highlights. But if I use the balance slider, it kind of foregoes your midtone values and balances between shadows and highlights. So if I go all the way right, it's gonna just give me highlights with no midtones. That green is gone. If I go all the way left, it's only gonna give me blue. However, if I go all the way left on the blending tab, you can see that the green in the midtones is still there, the blue in the shadows is still there, but the highlights are gone. So from what I can tell, the blending slider is if you have midtones, it will balance how much the midtones are in compared to the shadows or how much the midtones are in compared to the highlights. Something I would just play around with. I don't think there's an exact science to it, but that is what they do. All right, so now that you guys have a basic understanding of all the controls, I'm the type of person that hates watching a video that does an overview of all the new features of something, but doesn't actually put it to use. So I'm gonna give you two examples really quick of how I would actually use the color grading module. Uh, and the first example, I'm gonna use the image we've been looking at. And this really helps when you're trying to create a style, just like I talked about in my tone curves video last week. Uh, 
when you're trying to do a style or let's say you visit a location, and in this case, this is Iceland, a lot of times it's just overcast there. So a lot of my images all look very similar in the sense that it's overcast, the, there's black sand, those kind of things. The greens really pop. Uh, and if you wanted to add a style to all of those images, kind of make them stand out on a social media feed or even a wall portfolio that you're trying to do, maybe a calendar, something like that, you can add a light amount of color grading and it would look pretty good. So really quick, let's do that. Like I said, I'm typically not going to use the overall view here. So I'm just going to put a little bit of blue into my shadows, put a little bit of blue not that much into my midtones. Then I want to make a little bit of an orange yellow in my highlights. I'm going to boost the luminance there a bit. Let's bring this back down. Let's see what looks good here. So it may be hard to see once we've done the edit, but once I turn this off and on, you can really see the difference in the image. And it's subtle, but in my opinion, that's a good thing. So if I applied this look to multiple images, they would actually look, <laughs> pun intended, uh, more similar. And definitely when you're looking at a feed or something you're trying to stylize, could be very useful. The other thing I found is I actually found an image that did that used the color grading module, but wasn't something I was trying to change the style or the look on. Uh, let's see if it'll load. Hello, little MacBook. You can do it. Okay, finally. Okay, so you can see in this image that in the sky there is some sunset color on these clouds, but the reflection in the water is not exactly matching or doesn't have enough color in it. So really quick, I could open up the highlights. Oh good, it's already open. I can open up the highlights wheel here. I'm actually going to use the dropper and we're just, oh, we're just gonna go up here find a color that looks pretty good. I want to bring that saturation down. I'm going to hold shift so I don't move the hue just a bit so it's not as intense. I'm going to bring the luminance up just a little bit. And now if you take a look, mostly focus on the water here. If you look at the water, there's a slight glow of what you would expect from a sunset. Now, I didn't add so much that it looks like I've completely edited this thing out of existence, but it's just a subtle hint. And I actually think this is something that I would use in my everyday editing. Uh, something light like this that really makes an image make more sense uh, or adds a little bit of color to an image that needs a little bit more color. So that's actually a real world image, one I would possibly put in my portfolio with an edit using the color grading module that would actually go in there rather than just showing you some random picture you can adjust all the sliders on. Now, obviously it's a very small and you know minimal edit, but that's typically how I like to edit and it's typically how a lot of landscape photographers like to edit. Uh, they don't wanna add a bunch of drastic changes. They just wanna add things that make sense. And in my opinion, adding a little bit of that reflected sunset light on the water there makes sense. So there's a practical use for the color grading module. All right, so I have no idea how long this video turned out. I definitely know it was not three minutes. So uh, I hope it was still concise and easily digestible for all the types of photographers that may stumble upon this video. And if you're still watching, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, no pressure, but it does help me out and I really appreciate it. The other thing I really enjoy is your comments and discussions down below. I have no social life. Uh, ever since moving to Colorado and this whole thing that's been happening. So those comments or things that you guys leave below really do make me feel genuinely proud of what I'm doing. So I thank you and I cannot thank you guys enough. My only friends are, let's, let's guys, dish thing. I got this French. Oh, dish little grandma here. Dish is your friend. And Come here, come here. You're stretching. High five. Yeah. High five. Yeah. <laughs> she laid down. Anyways, thank you for watching. I will see you guys again next time. Phil, you wanna say bye? High five? Oh yeah. Yeah, there we go.
Bye for now.